So you get your brand new gaming computer that your mother bought for you, or you've got your laptop that your mother also probably got for you, and you know that on YouTube all the rage is playing video games and yelling at other things, and people eat that stuff up, so you want to make money. And that's what YouTube's about, is just making money. So with your brand new computer, you download OBS Studio, and OBS Studio is a wonderful tool that lets you stream record, do just about anything to capture what's on your screen, and also what you might be having in front of a webcam or anything of the sort. So you get OBS and you start recording, but you forgot to fiddle with the settings, and some of this stuff can be very confusing, so you don't know exactly what to do with it. So we're going to go right here with File, Settings. All right, you probably can understand me, so you're going to be speaking English. Theme is going to determine the level of light that OBS puts out, so if you go into dark, it changes it into a more black and white form instead of a white and black form. So I like to do automatically check for updates. Uh, I don't do open the stats dialog. That doesn't mean anything to me. These I have unchecked because I don't stream, but I might. It might be fun, but I have to have an audience, and really it's no fun seeing that view counter be one when you know that's yourself looking at your chat. So, source alignment snapping, I have no idea what that means, so I'm going to let you guys figure that one out, but here's what my settings are. I have it enabled, I have a 10.0 sensitivity, snap sources to the edge of the screen, snap sources to other sources. I don't exactly know what that means, but who knows. Alright, hide cursor over projectors, make projectors always on top, save projectors on exit. I have no idea what those are, but I would assume that not many people actually use them. System tray... Why not? Let's enable it. We don't need to minimize the tray when started. We don't need to minimize the system tray instead of the taskbar. I don't really know what that means. Now let's go to stream. So I prefer to stream on Twitch because I think that's the most popular platform and it doesn't really matter. I don't stream to begin with, but you can stream with Twitch, you can stream with YouTube, uh, Daily Motion, Facebook, and that's not actually the server that I'd be using, but I don't stream anyway, so it doesn't matter. If you get the point, I don't stream. So, now, what I like to do is make the output mode advanced, so that way it brings up streaming, recording, and audio. So for streaming, I'm pretty sure you'd only be using one audio track anyways. I have a 1080p monitor. Okay, now here's where I got a lot of flack on the last one for old OBS, is that the bitrate. When you're streaming, the bitrate will ultimately decide the quality. If you have fast enough internet where say you have minimum 10 upload speed, because your download speed doesn't really matter when you're uploading content, your bitrate will determine the quality. So if you're going to be streaming and you have faster internet and you have a more powerful PC, definitely stream with higher than 2500. You could probably do with, I don't know, 20,000. That might be too high, I don't know, but that number is what really matters when streaming because it really just depends. If you have a good computer and you have good internet, increase your bitrate. If you don't, it's going to look like crap, but hey, you got to build an audience somehow. Now, if you have a stronger PC, you want to use very fast CPU usage because you might as well. If you got the power behind it, you might as well. You can change that for anything else. All right, everything else here doesn't really matter necessarily. Let's move on to recording. So I record my path to a place. I like to use MP4, although some other people don't like to use MP4. I like to record in 1080p because that seems to be the standard. 4K is a little out of my range, and I really don't think many people have 4K monitors, so that's not necessarily a platform I'd like to do, although some people might. All right, rate control CBR. That stands for constant bitrate. I recorded 40,000 because I think that would give me the highest quality. It doesn't use up a lot of CPU power for me. Keyframe interval is zero. I like to keep that standard. Presets, default, profile, main, level, auto. I don't necessarily know what these mean, but it doesn't really matter. GPU, I don't exactly know, but keeping that at zero is probably the smartest decision. And then B frames. Next, we'll go to audio. Audio, I do 48 kilohertz because that's what my microphone uses, and that's what the intake is, I believe. So 48 kilohertz. Then stereo, it could be mono, I prefer stereo because I'm guessing that means more dynamic sound range or something. Desktop audio device, this stuff should, for the most part, be standard for everybody. I use a 
Blue Yeti, so it's going to be the Yeti stereo microphone, so the channel would probably be in stereo. Now you can do push to talk, you can do anything else of the sort. I don't because I don't really think that necessarily matters unless maybe I'm in a call with other people or if I'm trying not to annoy everybody then I could apply push to talk but you know when you're recording you probably want people to hear your voice because you've got a deep manly sexy voice that everyone needs to hear. Next we'll go on to video. This is currently active so I don't want to change any settings here but 1920 by 1080, 1920 by 1080 and then I like to keep the ferry mate at a constant 60 because 60 is the smoothest one and you can't see past 100 or 60 FPS, you know. It's not a movie. You don't need to stream at 24. You don't need to record at 24 FPS. If you can, try to get it at 60 because that just makes your content look the best. It doesn't look like your video is coming from 2009. Next we'll go into hotkeys. I like to do numpad 1 and numpad 3 for my start and stop because that's a little quick, it's out of the way, a lot of games don't require the numpad. So you can do anything like with Modern Warfare 2, I could show game capture, hide game capture, whatever, it doesn't, doesn't really matter. This is mostly up to you guys. And on to advanced, I like to make the process priority above normal because the games already take up enough processing power as is and recording it at a high quality so that way my content can be at a high quality is probably something that you want to prioritize so I set that as above renderer direct 3d 11 so I'm guessing that's a uh, direct x 11 nv 12 color format those that stuff I don't really change that's pretty standard for a lot of people uh, my audio monitoring device again is the blue yeti file name format the current year month day hour minute seconds that's what helps keep your content in order of when you record it because if you just have a name the names can get overwritten and sometimes you'll forget so I like to keep it in this format just because I can change the name later based on the description of the video and stream delay you can delay your stream if you're doing something like I don't know League of Legends when you're playing ranked and if you're very famous on Twitch like many people are and when you're at the high elos in League or Counter-Strike or anything you don't want to let other people know because when you reach a high enough level and people recognize you and you recognize other people that are streamers, then what they can do is their chats or even the people themselves can see, oh, I know that guy, he's streaming. I'm going to see if he doesn't have a delay so that way I know where he is and I can fuck him up in the game. And you don't really want that. It's not as beneficial for games like Overwatch because it's hectic, it's linear, everyone's on the same page, but or Counter-Strike. Counter-Strike, it does help a little bit just because people are hiding. It's a little bit slower paced, I would say, in comparison to Overwatch and League of Legends is also very slow paced because the games last 20, 40 minutes. So, all in all, these are the settings that I like to use. I hope I covered them all effectively and stay thirsty, my friends.